So what is GM? Well, GM is genetically modifying crops that would not happen naturally in nature. So you can take genes from a similar plant, like say maize or wheat, you can take a gene from a, a wheat plant and put it into another wheat plant. Uh, that could be genetic modification. You could take a wheat plant and cross it with a maize plant, and that would be GM as well. So it's anything that happens by recombinant DNA and that happens only in the laboratory. And are there different types of genetically modified product, uh, foods or crops? Well, I should say there are, but we've been genetically modifying crops for 10,000 years. Can I show you? We have got from a plant like this to a plant like this, which is maize, with 10,000 years of plant breeding and selection. From this to this? Yeah. Now, not by genetic modification, as you and I know it is covered by the EU regulations on genetic modification, but is conventional plant breeding by crossing the best with the best. What GM allows us to do is to identify a single gene right, and put it into a plant like maize or wheat. That could not happen 30 years ago. You could do it by breeding in the normal way and brett crossing and hopefully you would get the desired characteristic. I maintain that genetic modification, as we call GM crops, is much more precise, much more controlled and much a safer way of breeding plants than conventional plant breeding and people don't often appreciate that. And are you telling me that some of the genes in this are similar to the genes They're in They're exactly the same. Yeah. And you take, uh, you take potatoes. Um, we've been breeding potatoes. This is a rooster. It's not GM. It's bred by conventional plant breeding. But we know that potato varieties are, are susceptible to, to diseases and so on. If we could use the technology of uh, genetic modification, in theory, we could make them more disease resistant and therefore require less plant protection products to keep them disease free. Because in nature, whether you're dealing with carrots or whether you're dealing with wheat or also barley, you're working against nature all the time to try and keep diseases at bay. And at best, you will be one step ahead. And this is where GM technology allows us to do things in a much more precise way than we could do ever think about even 30 or 40 years ago. So why do we have GM? Well, we have GM because of scientific developments where we were able to select a gene for a particular trait and transfer that single gene into another plant that would give enhanced disease resistance, better quality, or in the case of Roundup Ready crops, herbicide tolerant uh, glyphosate crops. And I think it's a bit unfortunate that we started with the latter because people found it hard to see what was the benefit of developing GM crops with herbicide tolerance. But weed control is a big issue in crop production, whether that's in organic farming, or conventional farming, or GM farming. Weeds are there in the environment, they're part of our biodiversity, they want to survive and compete with the crop. We want the crop to outgrow them and do, and do uh, uh, you know, grow very well and produce high yields. So the reason we need GM is that it's just another tool in our toolbox that allows us to breed plants in a more efficient way than we can ever do by conventional plant breeding. So how does the crop grow and the weeds are not? Because the crop has a single gene that uh, breaks down the, uh, the, the weed killer, in this case glyphosate, in the plant so it doesn't kill it, the weed doesn't have it and the weed dies. They're very simple and of course that's why they started with that technology because it was very easy to do in plants and there was a big demand for it out there in the, in the farming community because battling against weeds is a major issue in crop production, particularly as we've gone to monoculture, little rotations and uh, it, 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 it makes it much more difficult to get a good crop if you can't control the weeds and that's why GM crops with resistance to herbicide have been such a runaway success. And there's an issue of pesticide resistances with a lot of GM crops. Is that a case? or It is a case, and it was predictable. I predicted 10 years ago that this was likely to happen. Because any time you have a single crop with a resistance to a single trait, and you keep applying the same herbicide onto it, unless you use rotation, mixed cult uh, cult cultivars, and uh, good anti-resistant measures, you're going to end up with weed resistance. It happens in nature. It happens with antibiotics. 
It happens in the food system. So scientists have to develop technology that prevents this from happening. The fact that it's happening in glyphosate-resistant crops is not a surprise, but neither is it a mitigated disaster. We we'll just have to develop other techniques to stay one step ahead of the, the weed dynamics and flora. So what about drought resistance? Are there solutions to that through GM? Well, I think this is where GM has a real a big part to play, in that we've got to develop plants that are more drought tolerant, more tolerant of more difficult soils, higher yield uh, potential, more yield stable. In other words, one year that you'll get a good yield, the next year you won't get a very low yield. And GM technology will allow us to develop crops that are higher yielding, more disease resistant, more tolerant to drought and to disease, and that's a win-win in my book for agriculture, for mankind and for society.